चैप केमिस्ट्री पेपर सेकंड ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री यूनिट सेकंड द टॉपिक्स दैट आर टू बी कवर्ड आर डिवाइडेड इनटू टू सेक्शंस द फर्स्ट इज द जनरल मेथड्स फॉर द डिटरमिनेशन ऑफ मैकेनिज्म प्रोडक्ट एनालिसिस स्टडी ऑफ इंटरमीडिएट्स and then intermediates versus transition states crossover experiments isotopic labeling kinetic isotope effect and the kinetic evidences so this will be the first section then the second section is electrophilic addition of halogens and halogen acids to uh, c double bond c so as we can see here we are supposed to know the methods for ascertaining the mechanism of a reaction so what we need to know first is the product its analysis and then the intermediates that we get in bsc part 1 we are studying intermediates say like uh, carbocation carbenyl and then the free radicals and also the di radicals so we have to know uh, the kinds of intermediates that we get and then we have to talk about intermediates and the transition state uh, the kinds of experiment that help us in ascertaining the right course of reaction mechanism uh, again a technique uh, which is called isotopic labeling and uh, also about kinetic isotope effect and the kinetic evidences so let's start uh, so so the methods that are commonly used for determining the reaction mechanism of a reaction as i said earlier it's first of all we have to know uh, the products we have to identify them uh, we have to do the determination of the presence of an intermediates we have to first of all know what are the intermediates we take help of the isotopic labeling uh, in between also we study stereochemical studies and also kinetic evidences Uh, it is not necessary to apply all of the above methods to determine the reaction mechanism so this is important thing it is not necessary to apply all the above methods the proposed mechanism should be energetically reasonable account for experimental observations and is in agreement with what is known about the analogous reagents so we have to uh, know about uh, uh, we have to first of all identify our products so the fundamental requirements for mechanistic determination is identification of reaction products first of all we have to know about our products and uh, uh, approximate we have to also know their yields what is the yield of the product it should be known before contemplating about the reaction mechanism and even if we have a minor product so that tells a lot about the competing reactions and it provides for the information for the mechanistic determination so let's start with an example which is identification of a hydroperoxides roh as a major product of auto oxidation of simple hydrocarbons led to the concept of free radical mechanism so here what we do is uh, we take a uh, alkane and react with oxygen so oxygen which is this one oxygen molecule so we can always write it like this so that is what is written over here and uh, then uh, we see that we have a free radical formation taking place r dot and then another uh, free radical formation where in the h so this gets broken in like r dot h dot and we have this particular formation so a free radical formation takes place which again combines with oxygen molecule and another we have a peroxide radical which later reacts with a alkane molecule and so in the product we have this hydroperoxide so this helps us in in uh, in knowing that a free radical mechanism exists for such a system let's talk about the another example so this is isomeric 
allyl chloride so allyl chloride we all know ch2 double bond ch ch2 cl so this is something like this so wherein if i substitute it and make it like this so it becomes like this and i also take its isomeric product so wherein i bring this cl over here so we have two isomeric allyl chloride and what we find is that we we take either of these things but we find the product wherein we have this 85 percent formation taking place so we hydro we do the hydrolysis so either we take one or either we take second we get a mixture of 80 percent tertiary alco alcohol and 15 percent of primary so that indicated that we have a common intermediate so what is happening is like see this one going away so we have a formation of this thing we see this similarly over here we see this and this is over here now we have these things so obviously it's a allyl carbocation system so it will be like this and then this becomes plus which is like this form we all know that this is a tertiary carbocation and so this is more stable and therefore uh, during hydrolysis OH minus this OH minus would like to uh, attack on this point and so we get this thing as 85 percent now coming to another example reaction of methane with chlorine and gas in presence of light uh, and uh, so what happens over here is that uh, methane is reacting with chlorine in presence of light so we know that little amount of ethane is obtained and also methyl chloride in fact we all know that ccl4 formation also takes place uh, similarly hexafluoroethane is observed when fluorine reacts with methane this reflects free radical mechanism rather than ionic mechanism because we are using light so obviously this acts like more like this and so we have formation of free radicals so this is what they have shown this thing ch3h cl dot so ch3 is cl and this similarly for uh, in case of the fluorination now coming to another example uh, the formation of uh, uh, one bromo two chloroethane so one bromo two chloroethane uh, along with uh, one chloro two bromoethane or say one bromo two chloroethane along with expected product one two dibromoethane so we have pr we are both over here and here it is cl and it is pr so what is happening is that uh, we are reacting bromine with ethane br2 with ethane uh, in fact it should be not ethene it should be ethene in presence of aqueous NaCl and that what happens it reveals that the addition of bromine do not take place in a single step because if had that thing been taking place so BR formation would have would have been something like this uh, but what we see is that it is actually like CH2 double bond CH2 Br plus like this so it forms a cyclic intermediate plus star is over here so this is what is shown over here and in the second step we have uh, because we are using NaCl minus so we have also Cl minus we have also uh, Br2 so Br2 is Br plus Br Br plus Br minus so we have both things Cl minus and Br minus so we get formation of this we get so what they are saying is that the formation of along with expected product so we get 
this thing also and this thing also. So this clearly means that Br2 is not reacting in a single step. So there are two steps involved and that is why uh, this intermediate formation is taking place and now Cl minus and Br minus both of them can attack and we can have both of these two products. Uh, another example toluene and chlorine. So we have this toluene and chlorine. So it can produce benzyl chloride. So this will be in the presence of light but ortho and parachlorotoluenes uh, ortho and parachlorotoluenes so this is ortho and then we can have a Cl in presence of iron and iodine at boiling temperature uh, this tells that the former follows free radical pathway in the latter ionic pathway so this is this reminds us uh, of the uh, halogenation reactions uh, that we study in BSC part 1 say like this plus X2 in presence of uh, uh, some Lewis acid and there we say that this X plus formation taking place which goes over here and uh, so eventually we have this thing but if we just consider this thing say like uh, CH3 X so and we are reacting it with say X2 in presence of light so free radical formation will take place and then we should have this CH2 X kind of a thing that is what they are saying that chlorine produces benzyl chloride in presence of light but ortho chloro uh, and paratoline in the presence of iron so that tells us that in case of the light we have this free radical pathway but on the other hand we have the ionic pathway another example acetophenone it is reacting with hydroxylamine to form two oxymes a and b so this is acetophenone reacting with hydroxylamine to form oxymes a and b uh, 